Yeah, it's a waste of money. Um, nothing, frankly, if, if I, I almost hate to say this for fear of someone abusing what I'm about to say, if someone's taking caffeine from time to time, they're already getting the most fat burning supplement they're going to be taking. Anything that is, is some big sexy powder, it says this is going to cause fat burning, <clears throat> that don't buy it. Honest, don't waste your money. Keep your insulin low. That's going to be the way to make sure you're burning fat. It doesn't, you don't need to complicate it. There's, in fact, ironically, a lot of those products probably have glucose as a filler. Um, a lot of these powdered products will use uh, a pure glucose as, as like a flowing agent to help it kind of flow and be more powdery. And, and ironically, uh, it'll be spiking your insulin and turning off fat burning. So don't touch those at all. Um, if, if, if these are, I imagine everyone listening drinks coffee or tea from time to time. That's the only, that's going to be the best inherent little supplement. Caffeine does in fact increase metabolic rate and it does in fact increase lipolysis or the burning of fat. Now there's a downside. Too much caffeine results in a resistance. You become kind of resistant to the effects of caffeine. And so I think there's a strong warning to make sure people don't abuse it and, and take it too often. And I don't know how we would define too often, but there is a diminishing returns. That economic principle of diminishing returns very much applies to caffeine. Um, so, so taking it too much too often will actually result in the caffeine not working as well. So, you know, be a little judicious with it. Um, and too much caffeine can increase cortisol, which is a stress hormone. So all the more reason not to try to abuse this. It's almost a testament to the fact that you can't trick the body, you know, the idea of I'm going to force it into fat burning. No, you're not, you know, or there's going to be a price to pay if you try to do this too aggressively. The key to fat burning is keeping your insulin low. Okay. Excellent. So uh, what food supplements do you recommend? Yeah. Um, so when it comes to supplements, I, I'm, of course, I'm, uh, let's, let's say that the health code shake, we won't call it a supplement just because that's a meal replacement. I don't take any supplements that are metabolic boosters. For me, the only things I take beyond my normal diet, every day I will take a vitamin D3 plus K2, all the more relevant now in the midst of COVID. That is one of the, Caroline, I'm not much of a conspiracy theorist, but the evidence on vitamin D being protective against, I'm not even sure if we can talk about this, right? So I'm gonna be a little more, I'll be a little more um, generic. Um, we have confirmed clinical evidence that vitamin D supplements can lower the severity and the risk of infections of certain viruses. I'll kind of leave it a little more vague to be careful here. Um, we have these data. I mean, these are real human studies. And I think it is, it is, a sh it is shocking to me that we haven't highlighted those data more. Um, but suffice it to say, that's one of the supplements I take because the role of vitamin D in immunity is profound. And I'm naturally a bit of a bad sleeper, um, which I think compromises my immune system a bit. Well, I make sure I take vitamin D3 plus K2. The K2 helps the D3 get absorbed. So I would suggest taking them together. There are all kinds of options out there that have the two of those um, combined. And I have no vested interest in saying that. Um, and then I take a, a cod liver oil, just one a day, because there's evidence to show that if you take too much of these omega-3s, it can actually start working against you. But there's evidence to show that omega-3 can help with heart disease and it helps with muscle building. So I will take an omega-3 every night, one with just one capsule of cod liver oil. Um, then I take the vitamin D3, K2 in the morning, and that's it. Those are all my supplements. I take a creatine phosphate, uh, a creatine monohydrate powder, I take it in the morning, about two, about two grams, so kind of a flat little teaspoon, and I put it in my drink in the morning. Um, create, and, and people will say, oh, well, creatine, that's for muscle building. I don't take it actually for muscle building. I take it for cognitive health. There are studies in humans to show that people who take creatine, have um, it can help reverse some of the cognitive decline that comes along with dementia. Well, my brain is my moneymaker. So I want to keep it sharp. I put mine in with my uh, protein powder. Oh, perfect. That's the way to do it. Um, so what happens to metabolism when suffer suffering from adrenal fatigue? Oh, adrenal fatigue? yes, this is a, this is a delicate topic. Um, but I'm a scientist and I let the data be what they are. 
Adrenal fatigue is not a real thing. I know that's going to be offensive to some people. Um, there is no evidence to suggest that adrenal fatigue is a real thing. Um, it, it, it's one of those kinds of things that people will talk about. Um, and usually it's in that kind of pseudoscience realm of, of health and wellness. People can, now there, there are true diseases of the adrenal glands. Um, there's no question about that. Cushing disease, Addison's disease, there are true adrenal diseases. But adrenal fatigue, um, there's no evidence to suggest that it's a real thing. So I'll just leave that there. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, can one lose weight if I'm cancer survivor on post-menopause and can't take HRT due to uh, being tumor hormone sensitive? Is there a chance for me to lose weight? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So um, I hope she's feeling okay. Um, there is... It is harder postmenopausal because estrogens are actually fat burning. So the the, the myth with estrogen, Caroline, this is something you and I have spoken about before. So uh, some of your audience might already be familiar with it. We've had conversations about the role of sex hormones in in fat loss or gain. Estrogens are protective against fat gain. Um, we know this from virtually every mammal, humans included. When you do a hysterectomy and take out the ovaries, in the absence of the estrogens, in particular fat gain goes up dramatically. And if you just supplement with estrogens, the fat will actually be controlled. So estrogens tell the body where to store fat, namely breasts and hips and, and, and maybe backs of the arms, but estrogens don't tell the body how much fat to store. That is insulin's purview. That is insulin's job. So the sex hormones tell the body where to store fat. Insulin still dictates how much fat to store. So in, this, in the case of this gal, um, who has, you know, these complications, uh, I would suggest all the more reason to control the insulin and there's no question fat gain is possible. Okay. Fat loss, sorry, so fat loss. So post-menopause, you just have to be more careful about the, the sugar and the carbohydrates. I would say yes, yes. That's, that is, we don't need to make it too much more complicated. Now I realize I'm a, a guy talking about this. And I sometimes get heat for talking about menopause as if a man can't know what it is. Um, yes, yes, the, 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 we don't need to overcomplicate it. Estrogens are helpful in helping the body not store too much fat, but that's because it helps the woman stay very insulin sensitive and keeps the insulin down. Um, so the key is keep the insulin down. And, and despite any other complications, a person can be very confident that they're doing the thing that matters the most. Right, okay. Um, is that for all age groups thinking how different my teens are than my husband and I? I think that's going back to the whole metabolism yeah. changing yeah. your life. Age. Yeah, so the difference between we adults fully grown and teens is that the teens are still growing. They can use that energy to grow up. When we're fully, when we stopped, all we're gonna do is use that energy to grow out now. So that's the difference primarily between a teen and in teenage years, puberty is a time of active growth, which requires a lot of energy. And so metabolic rate is higher. And, and I, uh, uh, so there is something to be said for the fact that these teens are aggressively growing still. They're, they're growing out their body still. And so that requires a lot of energy. So they, they do, in fact, have a higher metabolic rate, but they also um, aren't devoting their energy to fat storage. They're devoting it to muscle and bone growth and brain growth, and tissue growth, because they're actively growing. And, and we adults, we're done growing. Any growth that we have is going to be our fat cells growing. Yes. 